Let's talk about predictive error. When we are um, thinking about predicting our outcome variable from another variable, we have to understand that we won't be 100% correct. The better the relationship is between the two, the less error we will make. But we want to talk about predictive error. So in general, the greater the association between two variables, the more accurately we can predict one from the other. So for example, if I'm using study hours to predict your course grade, there may be some error in there. But let's say I'm using um, how many brothers and sisters you have predicting your test grade. Now there may be some predictive utility there, but you see how that information is probably not as good at predicting your test grade as um, how many hours you studied. So we would expect more error for looking at your number of siblings you have versus if we were looking at the number of hours you studied. So I want you to keep that in mind that the more um, relation, the more association there are between the two variables, the less predictive error you're going to have. So the standard error of prediction is basically a rough measure of the average amount by which our known y value deviates from our predicted y value. And so as our correlation increases, suggesting that there's a stronger relationship between the two, as our correlation increases, the standard error of prediction decreases. And so um, I wanted to show you this um, visually with um, the math and then also looking at a chart. And so our calculation is this. So what we're saying here is this is a standard deviation. So this is how wrong we are, how much our um, score deviated. But notice that we have some different nomenclature here. So this is the standard deviation of y, how much your um, test score deviated, given that we know your x score. So this is not the standard deviation of y, this is the standard deviation of y, given that I know your x score. How we calculate that is that we start with the standard deviation of y, and then we reduce it by this amount. And the reason I say reduce it is because this will always come out to be a fraction. And so this is our error, the error in predicting your grade. If I know nothing about you, I'm just going to say, what's the standard deviation of grade? But if I know more about you, then I'm going to be able to reduce my error in predicting your grade by how close the relationship is. Sometimes conceptually this can be hard. So I want to do it two ways, first mathematically and then visually. So let's say, let's start with a correlation that was very weak. Let's say knowing the number of siblings you have predicting um, test scores. So let's say that correlation was a 0.2, which we should remember is very small. So if I'm going to do this math, if I take 0.2 and I square it, and I just put R2 here this way, that would come out as 0.04. Right, so this value here would be 0.04. So if I take one minus the 0.04, that's gonna come out to this piece here is 0.96. If this piece is 0.96 and I square root that, that this whole piece that's gonna be multiplied times the standard deviation of y is 0.979. It's almost one, right? So it is going to be almost one, which means because there's very little variability, sorry, the very little utility in knowing how many siblings you have to predict your test score, the variability in test scores is about roughly the same as it would have been had I not known you at all. Now let's look at how that would change if I had a stronger correlation. Let's say I'm looking at something um, like how much or what your test score was before. So uh, like you have exam three and then we had exam two. And so we're gonna use exam two to predict your exam three test score. Let's say the correlation for that was a 0.9. So your exam two test score might really predict your exam three test score. So if I square a 0.9 for this part of the um, uh, formula, that would become 0.81. So then if I take one minus 0.81, for the other part, of, so this piece of the formula, that would come out to be 0.19. So I just have 0.19 here. If I square root a 0.19, it's going to become 
0.436. So sometimes these numbers are confusing because we're dealing with fractions. When you square fractions, they get smaller. And then when you square root them, they get bigger, right? So if I take um, 0.19 and I square root it, I now have a 0.436, so almost half. So I'm taking that fraction which is almost one half, and I'm multiplying that times the standard deviation of y, which means if I know what your exam two test score was, the variability in predicting your exam three score is gonna be smaller because I now know something useful about you. And so this, the error rate before was just the standard deviation of y, but I'm gonna take that standard deviation of y and multiply it times a fraction, which means this overall error rate is going to go down by the amount that I've calculated here. So my overall error rate is going to be smaller. So what I want you to take away from this mathematically is that um, if, let's say I have a correlation of zero, let's do that one. If zero squared is zero, one minus zero is one, the square root of one is one, one times the standard deviation of y is the standard deviation of y. So if I have no correlation, then my error rate stays the same, it's just its generic form. But if I have a high correlation, then my, my error rate is gonna go down and I'm gonna be better at predicting your exam score with less error because I now know something about you. Now let's go look at this pictorially. So if we're thinking about this um, in a, with pictures instead of just using straight numbers, I want you to think about um, how the dots would be uh, aligned. And so I'm gonna do two drawings here. Make sure I'm in pencil mode, okay. So I have this distribution, and let's say I'm gonna take your number of siblings you have trying to predict your exam score, which I hope you will realize is very, probably not very useful, although if you have a lot of siblings, then maybe they're distracting you or something. Um, well, actually, in this case, it would be siblings are making you do better. But see how there's a, a real rough utility in knowing the number of siblings. While there is a movement upwards, it's really all over the place. So there's a lot of movement um, and there's a, a wide range of scores for knowing the number of siblings you have and predicting your, your exam score. And so this would have a very low correlation because it has a low correlation, it's gonna have high error rate. Because um, if let's say you have this number of siblings, oh, I thought I was in red here. Okay, let me just uh, do, 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 there. If I'm at this number of siblings, see how my range of test score would be very wide? So it's not very useful in knowing how many siblings you had because there's such a wide range in test scores. Now let's go and do something that's a little bit more useful in knowing. Let's say it's exam two predicting exam three, and let's say it's a very good relationship. Do you see how these dots are all clustered together? And so looking at this, my error rate is much smaller. So if I know this is your exam two score, my range of error is much smaller. You're somewhere between here and here in your exam three score. So it's very useful to know your exam three score. So this one is going to have a high correlation. And because it has a high correlation, it's gonna have low error. And the last thing I wanna point out is if we were to flip, you know, just focus on exam three, I'll put this in green here, um, in exam, exam three. If I don't know anything about you, my best guess for your exam three score is the mu. And remember, we can go up and down one standard deviation. And so um, this is 34 and this is 34%. If I don't know anything about you, then my best guess is to use the, the average test score and go up and down. Say, I'm, I'm, I tend to be wrong about this much. So that's kind of what we're seeing here. If I don't know anything about you, I'm just gonna use this mark. But now that I know something about you, I am going to reduce this error and it's not gonna be quite so wide because I now know you're in this zone. So if it's something that has a high correlation, I've reduced my error rate so it's not quite as wide as the natural standard deviation, but it's going to be smaller. 
Whereas here, when I was looking at this distribution, where it really wasn't very useful at all, I'm still better off just using the standard deviation of the exam three score um, because it didn't really help me to know how many siblings you had. It didn't reduce my error rate at all. It's pretty much the same as it was. So the standard error of prediction, pictorially, you can see that if there's a high correlation, your error rate is going to be wrong, uh, small. If there's a low correlation, you're going to have a high error rate. Um, this is how it looks pictorially, and then you can see mathematically it works out the same as well.